Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the Indianapolis Arrows franchise. We have just over a month left in the season. The Arrows are sitting pretty right now. 71 and 60. We are in the wild card chase. That was the goal this year. But we are fighting for a division title now as kind of the momentum has shifted because at the deadline we traded for Joey Manessis and also Carl Edwards to hopefully, you know, boost that rotation. I meant uh, Cabrera, Genesis Cabrera to boost our uh, bullpen. But we run into a couple of teams here in the wild card chase here as we start the last month of the season and end the second to last month. The first is the Cleveland Guardians, and they are the divisional leaders right now. They are the three-time reigning champs as well. They have owned this division so far in this series. They have the same superstars, including Jose Ramirez, who, like I said, isn't really hitting that great, but he's still like a viable option in that middle of that lineup. I mean, he is still a superstar if there ever was one. They still have the Naylor brothers. They have Oscar Gonzalez, who is hitting pretty well. And then they also have uh, Diaz, who is also hitting very, very well as well. But we will see if we can swing the title here in the AL Central over to the Arrows as this three-game set will be followed up by another three-game set at home. So we play three games in nine days. We play the Guardians first, then the Orioles, and then the Guardians again three times at home. So for game one, we decide to switch up the lineup a little bit. We give a couple of guys days off. Jim Hall will be at catcher, Steven Benitez at short, and then Fred Scott in left, meaning Sawinski, Perez, and then the kid Ray Gonzalez will get a day off. So Ian Happ has been hitting leadoff lately. He's been hitting the ball extremely well. That one will be just a fly out to left field for the first out of the game. Joey Manessas comes to the plate. He hits one well to center field, but this one will be run down by George Valera as that one will be the second out of the inning. Alex Verdugo up to the plate. He hits one well up the middle. That one will be a base hit single off of Tristan McKenzie who is one of the Guardians' bright young pitchers in that rotation. And we got a man aboard here with two outs. Seth Beer also got the start today, giving Paulo Reyes the day off. That one will be a shot up the middle. He hit that one on a rope, and that one gets through the infield. And now we have runners on first and second. Jim Hall hits at the five spot today. He gets one inside, and that one will be called strike three. It was... Right on the corner there. I don't know. I would have called that one a ball if I was the ump, but he will go down. Tafon Edwards gets the start. The international prospect free agent signing in the offseason. 26 starts. He's 13 and 7. He only has six no decisions on the year, which is really good at this point in the season. So he will face a tough Cleveland lineup. Here's Ahmed Rosario who comes to the plate. He hits one well. As that brings up Yandy Diaz who has been on fire lately. But he will see that one go across the plate and will not wave his bat. That brings up Jose Ramirez hitting in that three spot as always. He gets a hanger over the middle of the plate. That one was hit away from the shift all the way to the right field corner. Verdugo has a good arm and right will hold up Ramirez at second base for a two-out double. We'll see if Tafon Evers can get out of this one as he faces Josh Naylor, one of the guys that was on the trade block last year. He's got unlimited power, but he swings and misses at that one. We made him look silly right there. So bottom two now, George Valera leads off the uh, second inning. That one will be a bloop single to center field. His Ojo Taikon will run that one down and get it in. We'll see what can happen here on the mound as that brings up Johnny Olsen, one of their draft picks back in season one. He is a starter now for them, but a hard hit ball to first. Seth Beer turns it. It's a 3-6-3 three, three double play. So on to the top of the third inning. Here is Fred Scott, who's hitting in that nine spot in the lineup. We drafted him last season, and he has been okay in his rookie year, but we know what he is. He is a speed demon. Whenever he gets on first, he's a threat to swipe Probably second and third. So he gets an extra step here. We're going to send him on the pitch. Ian Happ watches that one for the second strike. But Fred Scott easily swipes the bag. 3-2 count as this at-bat continues. Inside pitch. This one will be just a little flare out to third base. And 
Jose Ramirez will run that one down as he does touch the outfield grass on that. That brings up Manessis, who cannot keep up with that fastball. And it's going to be strike three as it brings up Verdugo, who had a hit earlier. Oh, and he drives this one to right field. This one's got a chance, and it will go over that short wall in right field. That one went barely over 325 feet, but Verdugo has enough power to muscle it. And we will take the 2-0 lead here in the third inning. Verdugo has been hitting great since we signed him. He has probably been our best free agent signing so far as he has shown that he can really hit the ball well in every situation. Joshua Baez watches that one for a called strike three as that brings up Miles Straw to the plate. He's got good speed, but he won't be beat that one out. Ian Happ gets the out at first. As it brings up Rosario again here, 2-2 two -two pitch. And this is going to be a short fly ball to center. So Tafon Edwards is pitching well through three innings. He's gotten through this lineup with pretty much no real trouble so far. Bottom four now as Jose Ramirez comes to the plate. One for one today. He almost hung one again to Ramirez, but it will be out of the zone. It's ball four. As Ramirez is on first base as it brings up Josh Naylor. Right over the middle of the plate. I don't know what he was looking at, but it's a called strike three. As that brings up George Valera here with two outs and Tafon is through four. And the Guardians cannot hit him well except for maybe Jose Ramirez. As now we move on to the fifth inning. Here is Steven Benitez at the plate. He got the start at shortstop today, but that was another questionable call by the Blue. As that brings up Ian Happ to the plate. Inside pitch, he's late on it, but it's actually a deep fly ball to center field. And Valera is under that one. This game remains two to nothing. No offense so far as this one's turned into a pitcher's duel. Will Myers comes to the plate. He hits one well down the right field line. That one gets all the way to the 325 sign and right. And it will be a leadoff double here for Will Myers as that brings up Johnny Olsen to the plate now. The 81st pitch of the game by Edwards will be hit down the right field line and barely gets past Seth Beer, who's playing first. Maybe if that was Reyes, who is a slightly better fielder than I thought he was. Like, in-game, Paulo Reyes is a great fielder, but that one gets all the way to the wall. It's 2-1. to one. Miles Straw comes to the plate now. He swings and misses. Man, Tafon Edwards has excellent command. That's the one thing I love about him. Is now that brings up Ahmed Rosario with two outs, and that one's up in the zone. you got to start to think that maybe the manager or the pitching coach is thinking about pulling him here, but he leaves him in to face Yandy Diaz, who hits one well to center field. But that one will be run down by Ojo Taikan coming off of the injury, as we're going to need him to be healthy for the last month of the season and hopefully the playoffs. Now top seven, Jim Hall to the plate, filling in four. Perez behind the dish, and that one will be a ground ball to short. As Cam Collier comes up, low pitch, and that one will be called ball four. So now man on first base is Steven Benitez, 0 for 2 today. He just hits a chopper up the middle, flipped on to second for the third out of the inning. The offense has went cold as we move on to the bottom of the seventh inning. Late in this game, we bring in Josh Brody. He has struggled so far, but we need to get him in some pressure situations where we can kind of build his confidence up. Well, that's not going to help. Will Meyer starts out with a leadoff single as that brings up Johnny Olsen to the play with no outs. He hits one hard to, sh hard to short, but it's fielded cleanly by Benitez and an easy double play here for Ian Happ over to first. There we go. The infield is doing well, even with our starters out. Ray Gonzalez, usually the shortstop, as that brings up Joshua Baez to the plate, chop to third. Cam Collier, easy throw to third base. He's such a good fielder. As now we move on to the ninth inning. Salvador Perez is going to come in a pinch hit here with a kind of a clutch situation here. Guys on first and second, 1-1 one, one count. He swings and misses at that sinker. Actually, he fouled it off as that brings it to a 1-2 count here facing Nick Sandlin. And Sandlin just gets him in front of that pitch, and he will wave at it. So bottom nine now, here's Archie Bradley in for the three-out save. He gets Jose Ramirez to check his swing for the first out of the inning. That brings up Josh Naylor. Short fly ball to center field. Easy run down by Ojo Taikan. And now two outs in this inning, one out away from a game one victory here. This is really game one of six that we're going to play versus the Guardians. As George Valera is not going to end this game, he walks there with the high fastball. That brings up Will Myers to the plate. 
he will also walk. So now it's getting scary. Here is Johnny Olsen at the plate. He gets a good pitch to hit. This is driven deep to left field, but Jack Sawinski, who came in late in this game, will run it down, and the Arrows will win this one 2-1 to one with a nice little victory on the road here versus the divisional champs. And it's a good start here to this episode as we win 2-1. to one. A lot of our losses have really been one run losses. So I'm happy to get one run wins here this season too as well down the stretch. I will take any win I can possibly get. So in game two, we will put Todd Workman on the mound here and he will face a very good pitcher in Cal Quintrell. We'll see what he can do. And right away, the arrows go up two nothing in the fifth inning off of a Jack Sawinski two run home run. Workman has been pitching well so far, only giving up three hits, no runs allowed, but Verdugo stretches this lead in the sixth with the two-run home run. They bring in Angel De Los Santos into pitch, but we cannot do anything versus him. And now on to the last two innings of this game. Here is Joey Manessis with a solo homer. That makes it 5-0. Todd Workman has not given up a hit since the third inning. He finally gives one up there, a double but now we're into the eighth inning, only four hits given up. And now Todd Workman looking for the complete game. He will get it. The complete game shut out by Todd Workman. And Workman has been excellent so far in this entire series. Remember back in his rookie season, I thought he was going to be a candidate for rookie of the year. Unfortunately, he did not get there. But he is having an excellent season for the third straight year. Last year, he was 10-11. and 11. But look at the numbers, though. That's that's the important thing. Just look at how much he's getting better each year. He gave up 83 earned runs year one, 77 year two, and now 56 in year three. He's got 18 quality starts, which matches his career best. And then he's got one complete game, which we just saw at a 2.2 war. And his whip is great. And his ERA is also really, really good. So I am happy about the progress from Todd Workman. But there is one guy that has been struggling, and that is Babe Miller. We will focus on him today, but his struggles have definitely probably hurt us in our playoff chase. He had 24 quality starts last year. We're now down to 11 this year, just showing the drop-off in production year to year. We'll see if he can get it done today. So we are up 2-0 here in the Arrows only have allowed one run in this first three game set versus the guardians and our offense has been doing yeah i mean okay not great not good maybe not even average we're hitting only 224 in this series but we're getting victories tuki tucson gets the start here for the guardians we'll see if we can provide some offense for babe miller who has been struggling miles straw leads off the game and he walks so man on first base right away Yandy Diaz at the plate. The runner is on the move and a good throw. But Straw will get in safe with the stolen bag. That one actually will be a strike out there for Miller. So that brings up Jose Ramirez. And look at Straw. He's looking to swipe third, and he will. He is safe. And now Ramirez, all he has to do is really put the ball in play. And he has an RBI here. But an outside fastball will be ball four. So Babe Miller struggling so far to keep batters off base. That one's going to be low in the dirt to Jake Fraley. And a throw by Perez will not get Ramirez. So now they have runners in scoring position on the wild pitch. Well, off to a rough start so far. Fraley continues this at bat. A hard hit ball to first base will be fielded by Reyes. But a run will come across the plate for the second out of the game. But that brings up Josh Naylor hitting 240 on the season. He swings at this one, turns on it, deep to right field, and it's gone. A two-run home run here for Naylor, and he makes it a 3-0 ball game in the first inning. That one went 390, and we continue to actually quick manage, and he gives up two more runs in the first inning. So I decide to see, like, what's the issue? Like, I want to see what it in quick manage, but he's just giving up bombs. Jose Ramirez hits a solo home run, and then he is yanked in the third inning. That is just crazy. Babe Miller is on an all-time all cold streak here for this rotation. But now we're down 6 nothing, and we have to come back here in order to preserve this sweep on the road. It's still possible, but down 6 nothing, it's going to be tough. 
Aniel De Los Santos comes in out of the bullpen, and he will face Verdugo with men on first and second here. One out, top five. He gets a pitch over the middle. This one's going to be a deep fly ball to right field. This one should be run down, but it keeps carrying over the wall. Verdugo with his second home run of the episode, and it's a right center shot. And that seemed like it was just going to be a fly ball, but it just kept going. 387, and it's a big fly right there. 6-3. to three. That brings up Salvador Perez two batters later, and he gets a pitch to hit. This one's deep to right field. It's gone. Just over the glove of Miles Straw, and we are back within this game. Two run down now, and Salvador Perez has been great for us this year. Hitting in that four, five, maybe even six spot, that's been his sweet spot this year. So down two now. Here is Ojo Taikan. Can he keep this magical fifth inning going? But he will just fly out to the catcher behind the plate. And it is now a two-run ball game. We decide to go back to the quick manage here. And now here we are with another situation. Now there's no outs. Men on first and second. And Jack Sawinski to the plate. He's 0 for 2 today. But he can come through in a big way here with the full count at the plate. As the top of the order waits, Jack Sawinski will walk. So now we have bases loaded, no outs, and this is the second straight inning. We have a big opportunity to score some runs here. Ian Happ gets a pitch over the middle. That one's hit hard to left field. That one gets down. It will score two, and the throw to third will not be online, and Sawinski goes from first to third, and it's a tie ball game. Six runs in the past two innings, but don't forget, there are still no outs in this inning. I can't believe they left De Los Santos in that long, but hey, I guess that's the pitching staff for the Guardians for you as that brings up Joey Manessis to face Eli Morgan out of the pen. He hits one well to left center. This one gets all the way to the wall. George Valera fields it. He gets a good uh, relay in, but it's not in time to get Hap from first, and it's now 8-6. to six. So back-to-back -back four run innings here for the Arrows, and we're still not done. No outs. Here is Verdugo. Chopper to short, and that one will be a ground ball for the first out of the inning. Paulo Reyes now, one for three. Make it two for four. That one smashed up the middle. And how about the season that Paulo Reyes is having? He's leading our team in average so far this year, and it looks like if he keeps going on the track he's on, he's going to have a very good season and maybe even a silver slugger season. Who knows? Salvador Perez comes up, and Eli Morgan wants no part of him as that brings up Oi Joe, and he will watch that one. That one could have went either way, but a good uh, fastball right there on the corner. So it brings up Ray Gonzalez. High heat, and he cannot keep up. A 9-6 ball game here for the Arrows as we go back to this quick manage to see if we can get through this. Carl Edwards now in the pitch out of the bullpen, and he gets out of at least the eighth. And we add a two-run home run here in the eighth to Ray Gonzalez to make it an 11-6 game. And now we are in control here as Reynaldo Lopez comes in in the eighth, though, and he gives up three runs. So now it is back to a two-run game. And now on to the bottom of the ninth inning. We decide to bring in Archie Bradley. He gets the first out and the second. And it's three straight to complete the sweep. How about this team? We are just, I think this is an incredible story. Seeing where we came from the first three seasons, we're winning games 2-1, to 5 nothing, and then we get out into a shootout 11-9. to Just crazy seeing from where we came from. 15 hits in this one. I just got done mentioning how we've been losing these close games, and now we win a close game, but scoring 20 runs in the game, that is just crazy. How about the game from Ray Gonzalez, too? I mean, he's going multi-hit games in Sim. So that's amazing. So now we go on to this Baltimore series next, and they are in the wild card chase as well. We win the first, and we do lose the second. I just got done saying this. Five to six, another one-run loss. It just keeps happening. So now we want to quick manage the third, and we know our man Tafon Edwards is really, really good in Sim. Like, he is incredible that's why he's got 14 wins on the season 
He's going for number 15 here. He's got 159 strikeouts too, which is actually really good. But here in the third inning, Joey Manessas hits a two-run bomb, and he makes it three to nothing. Tafon Edwards giving up a couple of base runners, but no runs across yet. As now we're on to the fifth inning as he gives up two base runners again. Jackson Holiday walks, but then he gets to second and does not do anything. On to the sixth inning now, bottom six. Paulo Reyes starts out with a single. He's one for three today, but no runs doing in that one. But Tafon gives up a base runner, but no runs have come across the plate here for the Orioles. We're on to the eighth inning now. Edwards still on the bump. Five hits given up so far, and now he's going for the complete game. A three-run cushion. He does allow a base runner, but then a double, and we just have to switch here. We have to go to Archie Bradley, put him in to get one final out, and he will face Cedric Mullins, who comes in to pinch hit, and he gets the save. Tafon Edwards goes eight and two-thirds innings. He gives up six hits. He does give up that earned run in the ninth inning. But a 15th victory here for Edwards this season. And now we head for another game where we could end up on another win streak. But to start the next uh, series out of three versus the Indians, they finally get one from us and they beat us six to two. So now we are into the month of September, which means the September call-ups are here. Now, I only need to make one move because Pat Washington was actually on the IL, which allowed Fred Scott to be moved up. And I'm going to keep Scott because I like him as a pinch runner. But I'm going to do something different here. I would have moved up Tara Blake to give us like one good start here in this stretch. But I decide to go and move up one of our closing pitchers here because we have two good ones. And I thought that these guys would be ready for the show right now, and they are. But there's no reason to even have them up and just let them keep developing because Archie Bradley is pitching like he's in his 20s, to be honest with you. So we decide to move up Ramon Aguila from the double A Naturals, and he will get an opportunity to go to our bullpen because we do need the bullpen help. And we do have to let go of Brandon Crawford, the 39 year old now. So now we head to the last game of, or the second to last game of this episode, and we end up winning seven to one. Bay Miller got the start. I was nervous for this because I think this was kind of the last straw. I probably would have moved up Terrell Blake if he would have lost that game because I just need a guy that can get us through this stretch of games here in the last month of the season. But I decide for this last game, we're going to face Tanner Bibby, who is a straight-up rookie. His first ever start here facing our ace in Jordan Montgomery. Just an interesting matchup. I thought this would be a great way to start next episode, facing a guy that's getting his first career start and trying to keep the Guardians in this race. They're right now a game back, but we are 77-62, and 62, our best record so far in this series. And we have a chance to extend this AL Central lead next episode as we complete the regular season and see if the Arrows will make the playoffs for the first time. Hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. But I'm from the east side, that's how we slide, that's how we ride, yeah, yeah, that's how we ride.